Welcome to another video and for today we'll discuss about limits at infinity. In my previous video I discussed about infinite limits and that is when the limit of the function increases or decreases without bound as we move closer and closer to a particular x value. That means that when we solve for the corresponding y value of our x values as we move closer and closer to a particular point, the value of y increases or decreases without bound that it approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. Now this time we will discuss about limits and infinity and we will discuss the behavior of the function or the limit of the function as our x moves closer and closer to infinity. Now take this example. We have the limit of x to the fourth as x approaches infinity. So there is no negative sign that means that's positive infinity. As we all know, positive infinity is a placeholder of a very large number that we do not know. And if we multiply that one to itself four times, since that's x to the fourth, so if we substitute infinity to the function x to the fourth, the value of infinity becomes an even larger number. That means the limit of x to the fourth as x approaches infinity is positive infinity. Now let's try to evaluate the limit of the polynomial function as x approaches infinity. Now consider this example below. We have the limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5 as x approaches infinity. If we substitute infinity to our function, or if we use substitution, the function will become infinity squared minus 3 times infinity plus 5 so if you simplify this one, infinity squared is of course infinity because it becomes an even larger number. And we have negative 3 times infinity, negative times positive is negative. So that is negative infinity plus 5. So we have infinity minus infinity plus 5. Now this part of the solution looks confusing because you might think that infinity minus infinity becomes 0 this one. However, you have to take note that infinity is not a value but a placeholder of a very large value or a very small value that we do not know or we cannot quantify. Meaning, we cannot assume that infinity minus infinity is zero because we do not know the values of infinity. So how do we solve the limit of this function if infinity minus infinity is not zero? So here's a math trick. In solving for the limit of polynomial functions as x approaches infinity, we can just simply ignore insignificant terms in the function. Now, the question is, which term is the most significant that we have to consider? The most significant term that we consider is the term with the highest degree, which means the term with the highest exponent. Now, let's go back to the previous example. We have the limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5 as x approaches infinity. Which term has the highest degree or has the highest exponent? We have x squared. So we can just simply ignore negative 3x and 5. Now what remains is x squared. Now if we substitute infinity to x squared, if we multiply that 1 to itself, of course that will become an even large number. So that means the answer is positive infinity. So the limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5 as x approaches infinity is positive infinity. Now there are also instances that as x approaches infinity, the limit of the function moves closer and closer to a certain value. So consider f of x equals 1 over x and try to observe the behavior of f of x as we increase or decrease the value of x without bound. Now in the first table we have x approaching negative infinity. So if we decrease the value of x without bound, so we have negative 1, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1000, and so on. The value of our f of x is approaching 0. Now, as our x is approaching positive infinity, so as we increase our x value without bound, the behavior of the function, or the behavior of f of x, is moving closer and closer to 
0, which means that if we are asked to solve for the limit of the function 1 over x as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity, the answer is 0. Now, let's have a limit at infinity theorem, which states that if n is any positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x to the n as x approaches positive infinity is always equal to 0, and the limit of 1 over x to the n as x approaches negative infinity is always equal to 0. So whatever the value of n is for as long as it is positive integer, then the limit is equal to 0. For example, the limit of 1 over x to the fifth as x approaches positive infinity is 0, and the limit of 1 over x to the fifth as x approaches negative infinity is equal to 0. So, now, what if you're asked to solve for the limit of a rational function such as this? You have the limit of 5x squared minus 2x over x cubed plus 2x squared as x approaches infinity. Now, to solve this function, what you're going to do is to apply the limit at infinity theorem that we discussed earlier and divide both your numerator and denominator by the highest power of x occurring in either the numerator or denominator. So, you try to look at your numerator and denominator and look for the variable or look for the highest degree of your variable. Now, in this example, the highest degree is 3, which means we have to divide both our numerator and denominator by x cubed. So what happens is the function will become the limit of 5x squared over x cubed minus 2x over x cubed all over x cubed over x cubed plus 2x squared over x cubed as x approaches infinity. Notice that we divided all of our terms with x cubed since x cubed is the highest degree in our given function. Now, if we simplify this one, this will become cancelled out. So, since there are three x's in the denominator and you have two x's in the numerator, this will be cancelled out and what remains is an x in the denominator. So, we have 5 over x. Same thing happens here, you cancel out x, so what remains is x squared. So you have minus 2 over x squared. Now this one, you cancel them out since they are both x cubed, so you have 1 plus cancel out x squared, what remains is x, so you have plus 2 over x. Now to simplify this one, we will now apply the limit infinity theorem that we discussed. If we have here 5 over x, if we pull out 5, this will become 1 over x. And the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is 0. And if we multiply 5 and 0, this will become 0. So this term is 0. This term is also equal to 0 since if we look for the limit of this particular function as what our theorem says, whatever the exponent of our x is, as long as it is a positive integer, then the limit is 0, meaning this is 0, this is also 0, and this one will also become 0. So what we have now is the limit of 0 minus 0 over 1 plus 0 as x approaches infinity. Now if we simplify this one, 0 minus 0 is 0. And 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. Which means that the limit of 5x squared minus 2x all over x cubed plus 2x squared as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. Now this is the formal method of solving for the limit of this function as x approaches infinity. But there is also a math trick that we can apply to solve this one easier and faster. So here's a math trick. For all functions that are denominator heavy, meaning the degree of the denominator is higher than that of the numerator, the limit is always equal to 0. Now in the previous example, notice that the highest degree in the numerator is 2 and 3 in the denominator. Since now, in the previous example, notice that the highest degree in the numerator is 2 and 
3 in the denominator. So let's take a look at this one. The highest degree in the numerator is 2 and in the denominator it is 3, which means that this is denominator heavy. Now for functions that are denominator heavy, the limit is always equal to 0, which means that the limit of that one is 0. So we have 0 as our final answer here. Now let's have another example. The limit of 2x over the square root of x squared plus 1 as x approaches positive infinity. The question is, can we apply that math trick to this problem? The answer is no, that is not applicable. That math trick is not applicable for this problem since even if the denominator has an x squared term, which means that the highest degree is 2, since it is inside the radical sign, we have to divide our numerator and denominator by square root of x squared. We have to carry the radical sign. We use the term with the highest degree and then you carry the radical sign. So we have 2x over square root of x squared all over square root of x squared plus 1 all over square root of x squared. Here we just divided both our numerator and our denominator by square root of x squared. Now if we simplify this one this will become 2x over plus minus x all over the square root of 1 plus x squared. So what happened here is just we divided x squared divided by x squared we get 1 and 1 divided by x squared is 1 over x squared since they are both square roots so we can just combine them. Now 1 over x squared is inside the radical sign and as you can see here in their numerator, the square root of x squared is both positive and negative x. But we cannot use both positive and negative values of x. The question is, how do we choose the correct value of the root? Now since we are approaching positive infinity, which means x is greater than 0, therefore we will use positive root. This gives us 2 over 1 or the square root of 1 plus, we know that the limit of 1 over x squared is 0, so we have 1 plus 0. So we have 2 over the square root of 1 is 1, so we have 2 divided by 1. The answer is 2. So the limit of 2x all over square root of x squared plus 1 as x approaches infinity is equal to 2. Now, pause this video and try to solve for the limit of 5x squared minus 2x all over 3 plus 2x squared as x approaches infinity. Now, you cannot use the math trick that we discussed earlier since both our numerator and denominator are in second degree. So, use the formal method. Okay, I think you already have your answer. So by using the formal method of solving this one, since our highest degree is 2, we divide both our numerator and denominator by x squared. So we get 5x squared over x squared minus 2x over x squared all over 3 over x squared plus 2x squared over x squared. Now if we simplify this one, we'll just cancel them out. So we get 5. Now we can cancel x here so we get 2 over x. Now this one is already in its simplest form and this one we can cancel x squared. So if we simplify this will become 5 minus 2 over x all over 3 over x squared plus 2. Now if we solve for the limit of this one as x approaches infinity we have 0. Also for this one by applying the limit at infinity theorem that we previously discussed. So what remains is 5 minus 0 over 0 plus 2. Now 5 minus 0 is 5 and 0 plus 2 is 2 so we get 5 halves. Therefore the limit of 5x squared minus 2x all over 3 plus 2x squared as x approaches infinity is equal to 5 halves. Now as you can see 
the degree of our numerator and denominator is equal. So there's another math trick that we can use to solve for this particular function or to solve for the limit of this particular function. So for all functions that have equal degree in both the numerator and the denominator, you can just take the numerical coefficient of the variable with the highest degree. So in the previous example, the numerator and the denominator have equal degree 2. So we can just take the numerical coefficient of x squared that is 5 and 2. Thus, we have 5 over 2. Therefore, the limit is 5 halves. Now, another example is the limit of x squared over x plus 1 as x approaches positive infinity. Now, for this example, we cannot use the math tricks that we discussed earlier since those are applicable for denominator heavy functions and functions with equal degrees in both numerator and denominator. Now, as you can see, this is numerator heavy since the exponent or the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree in the denominator. So what we can do is to solve this one using the formal way. So we divide both our numerator and denominator by x squared. So we have x squared over x squared all over x over x squared plus 1 over x squared. Now x squared over x squared is 1 and x over x squared is 1 over x. So we have 1 all over 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. Now we know that 1 over x and 1 over x squared have zero limits based on the theorem we previously discussed. So this becomes 1 over 0. Now to solve this one, we can actually apply the infinite limit theorems that we discussed in the previous video. Now since our numerator is positive and we are approaching positive values, therefore positive divided by positive is positive. So the limit is positive infinity. Now the question is, do we have a math trick for this one? For denominator heavy functions, we have a math trick discussed earlier also as well as for functions with equal degrees. Now, for numerator-heavy functions, there's also a math trick that we can use. Now, for all functions that are numerator-heavy, meaning the degree of the numerator is higher than that of the denominator, you can just simply ignore the insignificant terms in your numerator and denominator. Now, for the previous example, we have the limit of x squared over x plus 1 as x approaches positive infinity. Since we all only have one term in the numerator, so this remains. And then in the denominator, the most significant term is x, so we disregard plus 1. Now we have here x squared and x. x squared divided by x is x. Now we substitute positive infinity to x, we get positive infinity. Now so for numerator-heavy functions, you simply ignore the insignificant terms in both your numerator and denominator and then simplify and then you substitute so we get positive infinity now pause this video and try to solve for the limit of this function i think you already have your answer so let's try to solve this one since the most significant term in our numerator is 5x cubed and x squared in the denominator this gives us the limit of 5x cubed over x squared as x approaches positive infinity. Now, if we simplify this one, this becomes 5x. And then if we substitute positive infinity to x, 5 times positive infinity is positive infinity. Therefore, the limit is positive infinity. Now, that ends our video. I hope you learned something in this lesson. If you have questions, you may just comment down below. And I hope to see you in the next lesson.